What is up, everyone? How's everyone doing out there today? Welcome back to Wildcat MTG. And uh, today we are going to open up a Commander Masters set booster box. Uh, before we jump into the box opening today, um, we are approaching 2,000 subscribers, which is really, really awesome. I, I think right now I'm somewhere between 1,940 and 1,950. Uh, and so I just wanted to say for those of you out there who are liking and, and, and subscribed and watching and commenting on the videos, just know that I appreciate the heck out of you. Uh, for those of you who might be stumbling across my channel for the first time, I hope you'll consider subscribing and sticking around. Uh, but uh, on to Commander Masters. So um, right now these boxes are retailing for about $300. I did find some recently. There was a limited quantity. I could only get like three, but they were greatly reduced price. I think I picked this up like sub 250 after tax, which is incredible. Uh, but for the purposes of pricing, when I do pricing in it, I like to set it as per the market. So we'll say uh, as of the filming of this video, these boxes are about 300 a um, lot of fun stuff, and uh, what I have noticed is that the singles from the set continue to to rebound after after their dip from the initial release. So, a lot of fun stuff. Hopefully, we see some of that today. With that being said, why don't we go ahead and dive on in and let's crack some packs. So, as I mentioned, you know we are talking uh, the market price for these is still three hundred, which is you know hey it's it's twenty five percent below the original release price of uh, you know four hundred dollars, but they are still not inexpensive. But this does seem to be where the market has settled with them as, a, as far as a an equilibrium. Um, and, you know, to me, it's pretty evident. Even though it's a big set, it's pretty evident why. Like, there's just so much good stuff in the set. So I get, you know, why everyone couldn't, you know, go out there and, and buy a bunch of it. But I also understand why it's holding its price point. Okay. Start out with a reassembling skeleton as a... Foil Uncommon. First rare. Oh, nice. Grand Abolisher. Hey, that's not bad. A lot of good stuff. A lot of good rares in this set. It's not, it's certainly not Mythic or Bust. Uh, Abolisher, I want to say, is probably still like around eight or nine dollars. Well below its its price pre-reprint, but a card that also continues to slowly tick upward. So that's a really good first pull there. Double rare. Hey, we got Zilf, uh, Zilortha. Hey, this uh, this uh, Godzilla reprint. Uh, I believe it was like the box topper, I think, for Ikoria at one point. Um, so that's kind of cool. Still a neat card. After that, Loshiel Clo uh, Clockwork Scholar, Tatiova, Victimize. Sky Shroud Claim as a common. You know, we don't count the commons and the uncommons uh, generally, but I think Sky Shroud Claim is still like a $2 common. That's not nothing when you're evaluating, you know, your expected value of your box. And then we've got Palace Sentinels after that. A little Faithless Looting as, a border as our borderless card. And our land and our art card. So as I mentioned, it's definitely not all Mythic or Bust. Um, in fact, there are three rares in this set between Deflecting Shield, Deflecting Swat, which are pushing $40 a piece, and Cyclonic Rift, which is still over $30. So you've got three rares in this set. And it is a large set. You're definitely not guaranteed to pull one of them. But three rares that are commanding over $30 in price point, two of them that are pushing $40. Again, that's not nothing. Hey, Elvish Mystic as a foil common. Not bad. Disrupt Decorum, actually a cool rare. Uh, doesn't carry like a huge price tag, but it is a uh, it is a pretty decent rare. Does some stuff. Second rare is a Hana Ships Navigator. Mm -hmm. After that, we've got ourselves a Grade Gardener, the Awakener, Story Stormkill Arnest, not bad. St Vandal Blast, still ever playable. A lot of good playables, obviously for for Commander players, and a Borderless Arcane Signet as a. Uh, as an uncommon, uh, I think the non-foil version is still about $3 for this. Uh, so again, when you're evaluating your, your EV, your expected value, this certainly has to play into it. Pretty good uncommon in that borderless treatment there. I think the, the foil version is like six and this is like three. And we've got our planes after that and our beautiful art card. Uh, Mythic wise, Jewel Lotus. Yep, right up there at the top. The, uh, the base copy of Jewel Lotus is still around $100. A great Henge is now back up to, <clears throat> excuse me, back up to like $55. Uh, I, it dipped to like below 40 at release, like barely, and then and then it's right back up. Uh, we've got set, because it is a set box. Uh, I forget we have cards from the list in this. Uh, I don't recall, the, like I, I think it's a pretty weak list overall. It's weird, it's like, okay, well, why even do it if you're just going to mail it in on this? But that is, you know, hey, it's a Grizzly Transformation. Staunch Throne Guard as a foil common. First mythic is a spell seeker. Not bad. There are some uh, some boo hiss mythics. They can't all be bangers. Um, this is not one of them. This is not one of the uh, this is not one of the boo hiss ones. This is probably like a middle tier. I think spell seeker is right around eight to ten dollars at this point. Kind of making its way back up. Still a very playable card. Very good card for a commander. 
So, uh, hey, that's not a bad first Mythic. I think Mythic-wise, for these set boxes, we can expect somewhere in the neighborhood of, like, eight. That feels like a healthy amount. Treasure Nabber as our second rare of this pack. Third rare is an Inferno Titan. You know, Inferno Titan doesn't really carry a price tag, but it is a card when it hits the battlefield that uh, it, it commands your attention. <laughs> Safara, Sky's Blade, Knights. Good, what was that, four rare pack? Plus the Mythic, oh my gosh, and a Borderless Ulamog. Hey, that's a heck of a pack right there. So we had double Mythic and we have three rares in there? Holy moly. Yep, that's the, uh, this is the beauty of the, uh, of the uh, set boxes. So I will say that the profile art is probably one of my least favorite treatments that they've done in some time. And, and I think, I know art is subjective, but I don't think it's that subjective in this case because the profile arts, the variants on those are all like less in value than the base copies, which to me says something because a lot of the borderless treatments um, are more than the base copies. So I don't think I'm alone, I guess is what I'm trying to say. If you like the, the profile art, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not coming at you, but uh, it, it's not. It doesn't really speak to me. That being said, this is still freaking Ulamog, so that's really awesome. Um, I think Borderless Ulamog is probably still in the neighborhood of of twenty twenty five dollars. So um, yeah, we're not we're not upset about that. That's a really really strong mythic hit. Okay, wow, that was a heck of a pack. Path Raids are of Ulamog, still a really good uncommon, by the way. A spite Bellows, nice. And then a Borderless Exsanguinate, which is also not nothing. That's probably a dollar or two for the uh, Borderless Exsanguinate. Very nice. What That uh, was a was a monstrous pack. Sheesh. Okay. Yeah, that's going to help. All right. Double Mythic. That was great. Ooh, hey, a little Borderless uh, Foil Path to Exile. Probably like a dollar two. Paths are so common now that it's, you know, y y they're in basically every product. But it is a borderless foil path to exile. It's kind of cool. Rare is a Mystic Confluence. Uh-huh. After that, a Scythe Claw. Gisela, the Blade of the Golden of the Gold Knight. Um, of Gold Knight. Not, I think it's right around the $3 mic. It kind of like hovers right around it. Some days it's right above, sometimes it's right below. I'm going to put it up there as a really good playable card, but I'm not quite sure it hits that $3 mark. And that's okay. Still a really good card. And then Rakamar after that. Meteor Golem, Acidic Slime. And we've got Nadir's Nightblade after that as the, uh, as the Borderless. Beautiful Forest. And our art card. All right. So we're approaching, what are we have? Four packs left in this first column. Demon's Disciple as a foil common. Mythic, Extra Planar Lens. This is one of the cards that I, I expected. It, it, it hasn't rebounded as quickly uh, as I thought. I think Extra Planar Lens is, as a Mythic is still like sub $5. I think it's probably like three and a half to $5. Um, it hasn't rebounded considering the price point it was pre-reprint, uh, as well as a lot of the other cards, but Hey, I would say that if you are looking for one of these, it's still a really excellent time to pick one up. And again, it's not a mythic I'm unhappy about. So I'll take that extra planar lens. Very nice. Galta. Nice. Galta is still a hit as well. I think Galta is probably like largely on the back of Ixalan because you know, dinos, right? Uh, but I think Galta is like five or $6 right now. So that is definitely not nothing. All right. Kembara. The Moon Kraken, Portal Mage, Final Party. Good old Ewit. Still a very strong, uncommon pull. And then a Borderless, Kodama's Reach. Beautiful Swamp. And, oh yeah, I would not mind pulling one of those hits, the playmat. Uh, it's a Demonic Tutor. That's the Borderless Demonic Tutor, which is also still carrying a really hefty price tag. I think the base copy of that Borderless is like $63, something like that. Ooh, what have we got going on here? Do I have a good list hit? <laughs> okay. Well, I was trashing the list in this set, and then I went and pulled uh, probably one of the better hits on it. That is pretty awesome. Uh, well, I will take, I will eat those words uh, gladly. That is a Blightsteel Colossus off of the list. That is awesome. Blightsteel is a card that's, I mean, A, it's just, it's just really good. B, uh, it's kind of been recovering in price, so it's the Double Masters, but it's the list copy. I want to say Blightsteel is probably about $25, so that is, that is in a bonkers, a bonkers, bonkers list hit. Okay, well, I guess I don't get to say uh, mean words about the list anymore. I'll even put it up there with the mythics. All right, Faithless Looting is a foil common. Evacuation. 
That's not a cyclonic rift. You can't fool me. Oh, hand, oh, oh run frost spring, uh, a card that uh, dipped into the two dollar range after the reprint, and it was a it was a really really high price point. I think it was like what? I don't even remember. I can't remember. If it was like seventeen dollars or like thirty dollars. I think it might have crested you know the thirty dollar mark prior to the reprint. It is now up to like six dollars again. So slowly making its climb back upward. I don't know where it'll settle. Certainly it'll be below thirty or whatever it was. But the fact that it's not two dollars anymore and now it's like closer to six dollars. Um, that tells you something. Good pull. All right, Xanthus Sleeper Agent. Yeah. Valid Duck, Keeper of the Flame, Magnetism, Corpse Augur. It's going to do it for our commons and uncommons. A little Dread Return, which was downshifted to common in this set. Beautiful foil Elena Danner art force there. That's very nice. And I think it's Rejuvenating Springs as the art card. All right, well heck of a box first one and we're so far and we're only in the first column <laughs> i'm so glad this was downshifted to rare because if this were a foil mythic i'd be pretty upset uh this is carador ghost chief uh, ghost chief and i'm a big fan of double masters 2022 but it was still a mythic then and it feels real bad to pull it is a foil rare it is carador up uh, really good in like if you were playing this in limited i did draft this a few times uh, and if you have this guy as, as your commander in limited, he's he's a monster. Foil rare Carador, sure. Hey, there's a great hit for us, though. Very nice. Jet Medallion and Ruby Medallion still leading the way as far as the medallions are concerned. I want to say Medall the Jet Medallion is right about $16 right now. So that is a really solid hit for us. Um, can't be upset about that. Good old Wrath of God. Ever playable. Godo, Bandit Warlord. Good combo piece card. Doesn't carry value. Danatha, Coveted Peacock. Hey, Snakeskin Veil. Sulphur's Blast, really nice. Teamer Battle Rage. And we've got a uh, Borderless Kemba. Our Planes. And there's our art card. All right, last pack of the first column of the box. Heck of a first column between the Ulamog and the Blightsteel. Got some other good quality rares in there with the Jet Medallion and Galta. Beautiful. That's uh, a foil... Pathraiser uh, of Ulamog. Again, pretty good uncommon. There's a foil version of it. Bloodspore Thrynax as a rare. Uh -huh. Second rare is a Joel Rail, Monvoli Recluse. And Hamza after that. Sabira, Feast of a Succession. And that is going to do it for the first column of the box. That is the uh, Return to Dust. Beautiful Island. Is that Sidisi? Yeah, it sure is. Okay, let me do make some adjustments here real quick. Um, I'll give me some Ulamogs. I'll still throw them up top, but that Blight Steel is obviously pretty awesome. There we go. Okay, into column number two. Thriving Heath. Mythic. Oh, <laughs> let's freaking go. The Great Hinge. Uh, I'm telling you, this card is, is back up. It, it's like it never left. It's like it was never reprinted. It's already back up to like $55 right now. So that is one of the better hits in this set. Like Shy of Jeweled Lotus and uh, that's probably about it at this point. Great freaking Hinge, $55. That is a mega hit right there. And that's our fifth mythic. Technically third, you know, then there's the list. Uh, that is, that's tremendous. So good old Great Hinge. Huge, huge, huge pull. Toxic deluge uh, i know people say del deluge and i say deluge but it technically is deluge i guess but whatever well hey we'll say toxic nine to ten dollars because that's what's back up to that's a really good rare hit kai car good solid commander all right palace jailer factor fiction body double generous gift man oh generous gift being down to rare, uh, downshifted to common i forgot about that and then we've got ourselves a Borderless Counterspell, which I think Borderless Counterspell is still probably like a dollar. Very, very nice. Heck of a hit with that uh, Great Hinge. That is, that is fantastic. That is fantastic. All right. If we can hit like a Fierce Guardian Chips, like something really, really good at the rare level, this box is going to be nuts. Teamer Battle Rage. Verdant. Confluenced. Uh-huh. <laughs> Alright, or more fun. Sure, why not? 
Uh, I want to say Morphon is probably right around the uh, the ten dollar mark. Uh, you know, 10 to 12, I actually think, right about this point. So that is, again, not, that's not nothing as far as a, a mythic hit is concerned. We're not upset about that. That is uh, definitely something we will take. So Morphon the Boundless, and by the way, for whatever it's worth, I mentioned it, you know, I don't care for the profile. Morphon is one of the ones I like even the least, so I was, I'm actually better, I'm actually happier that it's the base copy. So Morphon, probably about 12 bucks. Great hit. All right, Akiri, Padim, Armorcraft Judge. And oh, hey, command tower. Uh, borderless command tower for the base copy is like a buck, buck fifty. I think the uh, foil version is still right around four dollars. Beautiful. Again, another Elena. She's so talented. Love the art. Love the foiling on these. Looks really, really good. Uh, her, she's an artist. Like I don't. I'm just now getting into like the art aspect of it, where I would, like I would like to have pieces to for you know art pieces uh, for my collection. I would not mind having stuff from her. But when I went to MagicCon. Um, her her line was rightfully so. It was packed just all weekend. She's immensely talented. All right, prismatic lens. Yeah, rare is a sublime exhalation. Uh huh. Yisen, the wandering the wanderer bard, and that was a two rare pack. Have jester, sure, sure, sure. Pilgrim's eye, all that glitters as the borderless. Our island. And our art card. All right. Probably about halfway through the box. Looks like we got another list pull right up top here. It probably isn't a Blightstill Colossus. It's a Leap, in fact. Is that from Stronghold? Good old Leap. Well, I mean, not originally from Stronghold. But anyways, that's a second list card. It's another list card. Makeshift Munitions. Rare is Imp's Mischief. Here's another one of those cards. So Imp's Mischief was, uh, it had a hefty price tag prior to the reprint because it hadn't been reprinted yet, like, ever. Um, then it sunk all the way down into like the two and a half dollar range. And now just the base copy is, I think, pushing $7 again. So this is one of those cards. It's a really, really good, uh, spell for, for black to have, especially if it's not sharing with blue and commander, giving you, uh, some, some ability, some, some trickery there. And, uh, yeah, Imp Smith chip already back up over $7. Divergent transformation. Nekusar, the Mind Razor. And Kazul, Cabal Patriarch. Nice. Letter of Acceptance. Be beautiful uh, Richard Kane Ferguson. Love the art on this Factor Fiction. It looks especially good in foil. Generous Gift also. So a double borderless. That's kind of neat. Our Land. And there's that Regal, Regal something or other. Yeah, Behemoth. Cool. All right, we are five five mythics plus uh, a blood steel colossus off the list, which was completely unexpected. Hey, the loyal companion, excellent uh, excellent counters commander as well. All right, sword of the animist, another card that was hey, this is like you know a really good recognized piece of equipment in commander, and after the reprint, it dipped to like three dollars, and it's also I think pushing between six and seven dollars at this point. So another strong rare hit. Audric, Master Tactician. Carenzo in the Borderless, because why not? Carenzo's playable. Like, it's it's decent. Um, but, you know, it, it doesn't carry it, any value, even as the, the, the Borderless or, or Profile Art version of it. Captain Ripley Vance, Nemata, Loyal Drake, Geo Golem, a Braid. And a little Borderless Slimefoot the Stowaway. Yep. And a Frantic Search. Those double Borderless packs are kind of neat. Uh, there is a couple borderless cards, those those uncommons that are actually still carrying a pretty substantial price tag. I think the borderless soul ring is like nine dollars for the base copy because it is awesome looking, and then I think if you pull a full version of it, it's still like a twenty dollar card. So, hey, path of ancestry. So we got a borderless foil uh, path of ancestry. Yeah, probably like a dollar or two. I'm sorry, adjusting piles. There we go. Rare is a spectator seating. Nice. Hey, spectator seating. The uh, the lands, the lands are not nothing. Um, that's pretty good. So I think spectator seating is probably like seven to nine. I think in that range. Pretty strong rare, <laughs> but not as strong as Cyclonic Rift. <laughs> Let's go. Let's freaking go. Even with the reprint in Ravnica remastered, uh, Psych Rift is still. Up there with Fierce Guardianship and um, Deflecting Swat. I want to say Psych Rift is like $31, $32, something like that. That is tremendous. I'm never upset about pulling this card. 
Great freaking pull. Psych Rift. Yuriko. Nice. Good solid commander, of course. Tabarax. Hero's Blade. Assault Suit. Path of Ancestry. Beautiful Mark Pool Mountain in the foil version. I think we have like three of those. The, uh, the foil lands. Excellent. And uh, there we go. So, uh, <clears throat> needless to say, I think this box, pretty much despite what happens the rest of the way, is going to end up being pretty darn good. We got another Mythic off the list here. So apparently I was just trash talking the list and it was like, hey, we heard you and we don't like it. Uh, this is Dragonlord Ojitai off of the list. I don't think Ojitai is, is a big uh, financial value, but a second, second Mythic off the list, I cannot thumb my nose at that. Bastion of Remembrance as a foil uncommon. That's actually a really good one. This was a card that was prior to the reprint, like three or four dollars for the base copy, and the foil copies were were more than that. Ogre Slumlord. Uh-huh. Curtain's Call, sure. Azusa. Azusa's still, you know, Azusa's still a three, four dollar card, even after uh, the, the reprint. Slowly making her way back up, so we'll put that up top. Goreclaw. Ashnod's Altar. Uh, Ashnod's Altar as a uncommon is like six to seven dollars right now and i think you know right up there with lightning uh, lightning greaves is like five to six ashnaud altar like six seven dollars for an uncommon burnished tart ulamog's crusher and a vandal blast borderless vandal blast probably a buck or two as well a little mountain and our art card all right last pack of the second column Obscuring Haze. So we got a second foil rare. Uh, if you were uh, to name the p most powerful, the least powerful of the free spells, the free commander spells, Obscuring Haze is definitely down towards the bottom, at the bottom. Uh, pales in comparison to the rest of them, which are, you know, Guardianship, SWAT, Rollick, and uh, Flawless Maneuver. But it is a foil rare, and you know what? You can do worse than that. In fact, we kind of did earlier. So, hey, a foil rare Obscuring Haze I will not be upset about. Star of Extinction, which was downshifted to rare for this, previously was Mythic. Righteous Confluence. Another Carador. <laughs> Carador's like, oh, what? Did somebody call my name? <laughs> uh, Dread Return. Exclude. Hey, Borderless Elvish Mystic. Not bad. And then our land and our art card. Okay. We are officially into the last column of the box here. And uh, we are doing quite, quite well. Like... There's, there's no, uh, there's no doubt about it. We're doing pretty darn well here. If we can, in fact, honestly, only at five mythics, I think we should still be good for a couple more. And we have largely killed it in the mythics. Um, and we hit, you know, of course, one of the be best, uh, best, most valuable rares in this set. So here we go. Assault suit in the foil. Rare is a stone hoof chieftain. Good card. I employ this in a deck. Cranko. Cranko is always good for a buck or two, right? All right, Morrow Sorcerer, Anafenza, Loyal Apprentice, Dread Return, Resculpt, and another Borderless Counterspell. Swamp, and uh, is that Darksteel Mutation? It's the art card. Okay, so if we can get a couple more Mythics, and if we get any more help in the rares, this box is going to go from just really, really good to exceptionally good. <laughs> All right, Borderless Foil Dread Return. Excellent. Flawless Maneuver. Hey, that's not bad. I think Flawless Maneuver is uh, right around $6, $6, $7 at this point. So that is, uh, that's not nothing. Again, a really strong rear, really strong playable card. We'll take that. Avatar of Slaughter. Sidisi. Gorex. Ooh, yeah, there's a good, uh, there's a good Borderless. Thran Dynamo. Excellent. It's probably a dollar or two as well. Slime foot art card. Yeah, flawless maneuver is not bad. Again, I think it's like six or seven dollars. <laughs> Rift bolt, which is uh, which is off of the list, which was uh, this is from original Time Spiral, but was also reprinted in Time Spiral Remastered. Opened a little of that product, just a little bit. All right, solemn ritualist as a foil uncommon. There's another good one. All right, sapphire medallion. Uh, I want to say sapphire medallion is probably. Right around ten dollars, I think pearl. Like I think the green one, emerald, is like eh, three or four or five dollars, and I think the pearl is like seven or eight. I want to say sapphire is right around ten. 
So that is a also really good hit. And a mi hey, Mythic, nice, it's Micaeus. Um, Micaeus used to be like a $20, but it was on the list for a really long time, so that dropped it down. I mean, typically the list doesn't leave like a huge impact, but then when you leave it on there for like a million sets, like eventually copies are going to get out. Uh, I think Micaeus is still floating around $8, so uh, he is uh, he's hard to kill. He's hard to kill. It's hard to kill his value. He won't allow it. So, Micaeus, nice. Stitcher Garolf after that, as our another rare. Tetsuko, Annex, nice. Hey, Darksteel Mutation, Path to Exile, Bastion of Remembrance. Really, really solid uncommons. Good old generous gift. Island, and our art card. All right, we've got five packs left here. We did, that did bring us up to, what is that, six Mythics? Which is actually still kind of a low count for, for one of these boxes, if we're being honest. But hey, our quality of Mythics has been really, really high. So it's, it's not necessarily a complaint, just more of an observation. All right, file, uh, Vial of Dragonfire. Hey, Hammer of Nazan. Here is another card that uh, was like after the reprint, and I was, it was to me, it, it couldn't last because the Double Masters version of this was like 10 to 15 dollars. And when this reprint got reprinted, it dropped down to like two, two and a half, three dollars, and now it's like a nine, ten dollar card again, um, which is not a shocker to me. So, Hammer of Nazan, very nice. That's a good pull. Decree of Pain. Ashling Pil the Pilgrim. All right. Return to Dust. Exsanguinate. Very nice. Prismatic Lind. Good old Commander Sphere in that borderless version. Beautiful Land of Danner art. Okay. Here we go. Finish strong. Can we get anything else? We did get another foil rare. It is an Ogre Slumlord. It is uh, nothing to write home about, but it is a foil. It's a third foil rare. Can't be upset about that. Savine's Reclamation. Good playable card. Obscuring Haze, because why not? Obscuring Haze probably, you know, I can't remember. It's right around the 2 to $3 mark. I'll put it up top. Experimental cr Experiment Crash. Ooh, but there's a really good one. Hey, Flawless Maneuver in the Borderless. So that is another free spell. We've hit double Obscuring Haze and double uh, Flawless Maneuver. I want to say the... Uh, I want to say the uh, borderless version, which or frame break version, does look really, really good. Uh, good, and it's like probably around ten dollars, ten to twelve. So that is a solid hit for us for sure. Verdoff, Kirtars, Wrath, Jade Mage. Uh huh. Looks like we're gonna have double borderless back here. We've got Path to Exile and Elvish Mystic, and another beautiful Mark Pool, Foil Land, Azusa, and that profile. Azusa is one of the few I think looks really good in the profile art. All right, we have another list hit here. Oh, hey, Archaeomancer's map. Man, for all the trash I was talking about the list, uh, well, here I am. So this is a, I think it, Archaeomancer's map is probably, I'm going to take a guess. I'm probably wrong on this. I think it's like a 4 or $5 card, though. So that's not bad. All right, Wind Rider Wizard. Wizard. Ragnogenesis. Cool. Ragnogenesis is one of those cards that was uh, very, very scarcity-driven in pricing. It was a huge, huge price tag prior to the reprint, which was ridiculous. It's currently like a 3 to $4 card, kind of slowly ticking its way back up as well. But a very good card, to say the least. All right. Azami, Lady of Scrolls. Works the Blade Wing. Uh-huh. Extinguish All Hope. Myriad Landscape in that beautiful borderless version. Island. And our art card after that. We have two packs left. Okay, so we can we gut out another couple, like another Mythic. Witch's Cauldron. Rare is it? <laughs> Never mind. All right. I don't need Mythics. We're good. Uh, deflecting Swat. This card has a huge price tag on it. Deservedly so. It is one of the two. I mean, I, we've hit now two of the three most valuable rares in the, in the, in the set. Uh, I think Deflecting Swat is right around $47 right now. So that is a huge, huge, huge hit for us. Super, super good. Not, uh, not at all upset about that. That's for sure. Very nice. I said 47, I meant 37. I was like, what am I thinking? I was like, no, there's no $50 rares in this set. Uh, Marin, Squee of Nabob, Yargle, Rise of the Tide, Slice and Dice. A little Frantic Search, Borderless Frantic Search. Yeah, not bad. Uh, again, I think uh, 
Fierce Guardianship is like right around 38, 39. I think SWAT is like 37 and Rift is like 31. So we've hit two of the three most valuable rares and we hit one of the most valuable mythics. Uh, we're, we're good. Last pack. Here we go. Inspiring Statuary. Uh-huh. Awakening Sun's Avatar. Sakiko. So triple rare pack. And that's going to do it. All the lands. All the utility lands. Path of Industry. Another Elena Danner. Beautiful. Foil Mountain. And uh, hey, we got a stamp card. I don't think I actually saw any other signatures on any of the other ones that I noticed. Not that I really look for that anymore, but there we go. Uh, so just taking a peek at our goods here. You know, the one thing I'll say is like the mythic count is a little low. It's light because one of them is Blightsteel and that was off of the list. And so that means we only had six mythics otherwise. And that to me, if I recall correctly on these boxes is really low. I typically remember them being like between eight, somewhere upwards, sometimes upwards of 10 mythics. But the fact of the matter is, is like, our lowest mythic is, I think, extra planar lens. And even that, to, to me, doesn't feel bad. Spellseeker's 10. Morphon's like 12. McKay's is like 8. Uh, Ulamog, probably 20, 25. Great Hinge is like 55. And Blightsteel's probably 25. And then the rares. This is where we did a lot of damage. Uh, Deflecting Swat, 37. Uh, Psych Rift, 31. Sword, probably 7, 8. Del Deluge, uh, probably 8 to 10. Medallion, Jet Medallion, 16. Uh, just a lot of 7, 8, 9 dollar rares in there. Commander Masters, um, I know it has a huge price tag, but they didn't mail it in with the set boxes. I will say that, like, the value is there for me. So uh, that's going to do it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, do me, a favor, uh, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button for me. Hit the like button for me. And by all means, drop me some comments. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much, everybody. And be well.